Welcome to Warn, today's news headlines are China developing world's fastest amphibious fighting vehicle China is developing the world's fastest amphibious armored vehicle that reach a top speed of 50 km per hour when traveling in calm waters. While there are many amphibious armored vehicles in the world, most of them move very slowly in the water. The North China Institute of Vehicle Research has built the armored fighting vehicle, AFV, that can attain a top speed of 50 km per hour on calm waters. That speed would make the amphibious AFV the fastest amphibious military in the vehicle in the world. Even with armor and weapons on a production version, it would still likely reach amphibious speeds of at least 19 to 28 km per hour. By comparison, the IVCO-B Super AV, an amphibious AFV proposed by the U.S. Marine Corps, has a top amphibious speed of about 9 km per hour. The Chinese amphibious AFV can retract its wheels against the underside of its hull. It has a V-shaped hull to reduce water drag. It achieves its record high speed with compact pump jets, as well as retracting its wheels toward the hull to reduce drag, Popsi reported. The proof-of-concept vehicle has a lightweight, about 5.5 tons without armor or installed weapons, that allows it to be particularly speedy. China promoted OBOR is a debt instrument only, claim European experts European economists and experts have concluded that the China promoted One Belt and Road, OBOR, initiative is nothing else but a debt instrument that can and will drive several nations, including Pakistan towards bankruptcy. China, according to these experts, is charging interest rates as high as 16% and above for funding made available for OBOR projects like the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC, and cautioned that these loans, which are cumulative, cannot be repaid easily. They are certain that countries like Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Nepal could be pushed into an endless debt trap. Contrary to the claims made by Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif that the CPEC could emerge as a game-changer for the Pakistan economy, there is a word and concerned perception gaining ground that the project is all and only about boosting Beijing's position through its renminbi or yuan currency. One expert has said that China is competing globally to make the yuan an alternate currency to the dollar, and its One Belt One Road OBOR, in which CPEC is a project, is to play a major role in this. Pakistani are our slaves says Saudi Defense Minister Saudi Arabia has always believed that it was the true land of Islam. While they consider other Muslim nations inferior, they also claim that they are the direct descendants of Muhammad. The Prince of Saudi Muhammad bin Salman has made a controversial statement humiliating Pakistan. Muhammad bin Sulaiman believes that Pakistanis are the slaves of the Arabs. Suleiman is also the defense minister of Saudi Arabia. This statement proves that Saudi looks at every other Muslim country with the converted Muslim country perspective. Muslims from India, Pakistan and Bangladesh are called Hindu Muslims in Saudi. They consider the Muslims from these three nations to have converted to Islam from Hinduism. The Indian, Pakistani and Bangladesh Muslims are also called as Al-Hindi Muskeen referring to them as second-grade Muslims. The differentiation in the system is an open fact. Arabi Muslims are preferred to Hindu Muslims, be it any job or top post. We must tell you that prior to the Sulaiman kings, the Abdullah kings reigned in Saudi. But, the outlook was the same. The Abdullah kings had said that Indian and Pakistani Muslims grow beards to look good like us, but they look like they've come straight from the forest. China backs India's tsunami warning system in South China Sea China has backed India's plans to set up a tsunami warning system in the disputed South China Sea, which is almost entirely claimed by Beijing. China, which is touchy about its territorial sovereignty over the energy-rich waters, thinks an efficient tsunami alert mechanism would be good for literal states. Reacting to India's decision to explore the possibility to set up such a system, the Chinese Foreign Ministry told IANS that it was in the interest of all parties to strengthen tsunami early warning research. 
China and relevant countries have established relevant facilities and systems in the South China Sea in accordance with the requirements of the relevant UN agencies, the ministry told IANS. The relevant parties can discuss relevant cooperation issues under the existing cooperation mechanism. Three Chinese warships dock in Karachi Three warships of the Chinese Navy have docked at Pakistan's southern port city Karachi on a four-day goodwill and training visit as the two all-weather allies step up their strategic ties. The warships, Changchun, Jingzhou and Zhaohu, of the People's Liberation Army Navy are part of a task group that will hold a passage exercise with the Pakistan Navy ships to enhance interoperability, officials here said. The visit will promote understanding and mutual trust between the two nations and their peoples, the commander of the Chinese Navy fleet, Rear Admiral Shen Hao, said. Shen said pragmatic cooperation and communication between the two navies will strengthen regional stability and world peace and play an active role in promoting common development. A welcome ceremony was organized as the fleet reached here on a four-day goodwill and training visit yesterday. Karachi is one of the two major ports in southern Pakistan, the other being the Gwadar port in Balochistan province, which is being built with Chinese assistance. Reports have previously suggested that China may potentially use the Gwadar port as an overseas naval facility. Experts believe that CPEC and the Gwadar port would enhance military capabilities of both China and Pakistan, and increase the Chinese Navy's access to the Arabian Sea. Having a naval base in Gwadar could also allow Chinese vessels to use the port for repair and maintenance of their fleet in the Indian Ocean region. Also, the Karachi port lies on the route of the controversial 46 billion US dollars China-Pakistan economic corridor that links the Gwadar port to China's Xinjiang province. India has objected to the CPEC, which is a part of China's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative as it runs through Gilgit and Baltistan region of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. After OBOR gets ready, Pakistan will become China's colony, S. Akbar Zaidi Pakistan will become a colony of China once the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC, flagship project under the One Belt One Road, OBOR, initiative is operationalist contended top PAC political economist S. Akbar Zaidi on the very day the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, summit praised Beijing's mega-connectivity plan. In a lecture titled Has China Taken Over Pakistan organized in Kolkata by think tank Calcutta Research Group on Friday night Zaidi noted that the CPEC initiative is the most discussed but the least transparent among all the foreign initiatives in Pakistan. It is indeed a game-changer, but not in the way our ruling classes have projected it to be. It will enslave Pakistan and undermine its sovereignty, alleged Zaidi author of pioneering books, Military Civil Society and Democratization in Pakistan and Issues in Pakistan's Economy. CPEC is a part of China's OBOR initiative to expand its influence in the world and Pakistan is just the geographical space used by Beijing to reach the warm waters of the Persian Gulf. But in the process, Beijing blueprint will ensure complete control over Pakistan, Zaidi further alleged. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this news. Please share your views in comment box. Please like and share this video. Press subscribe button and bell for auto update to you regarding my channel world action and reaction news, warn.